I guess it's time for an upgrade. If you've watched all kinds of art videos on the mistakes that you're making and you've fixed every single one of them, I bet your art is still not where it needs to be. Chances are that you've missed out on some crucial skills and massive changes that you need to make first before you even think about changing out the little details later. Today we're going to sit down and take a long hard look at all of the art mistakes that we tend to make that actually breed even more art mistakes and we're going to make huge strides in improving our art quality. Like seriously, every single tip today is going to change your art life forever so you better strap in. Quick side note, new setup, new microphone, new background. I was just kind of bored of just having a plain white wall in the back, so let me know what you think. <laughs> but as always, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, then please let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and leaving a comment below. Hit that subscribe button slash notification bell so you don't miss a future upload on this channel. If you'd like more intensive, longer form art tutorials, check out my Patreon link is in the video description. But now let's look at five art mistakes that you don't even know you're making. Before we dive in, you can rest assured that none of these tips require you to buy any new equipment or books or anything. And also I can't shake off the astrology vibes. So we are now going to start diving into the light side of these zodiac signs. So today we're going to paint Aries, but this time looking at the good qualities, if any. I can say that I'm an Aries. All right, let's dive in. Okay, look, you and I both know you got into art because of anime. It's fine, this is a safe space for weeaboos. But a lot of the times, art school and art courses in general will start you off with a whole bunch of drills and art theory that, to someone who's completely new to art, is an instant turn off because no one really enjoys repetitive exercises. Look, I know it is important to know the basics and we'll get to that in a sec, but when you're a beginner who is interested in the cool, fascinating characters and creatures and environments, being forced to draw basic shapes and practice light and shadow can be a major buzzkill. And before you know it, you've already lost interest in actually wanting to draw. It's like in science, where you want to do all those cool experiments with the erupting volcano, but they force you to sit down and learn atomic structures. It is necessary, but it takes the fun out of it. My advice? Draw what you want to draw. If it's rubbish, it's rubbish, but because you actually love what you're doing, you will consciously want to get better at it. For instance, I started off drawing celebrity portraits, right? Never took a serious art class in my life, only the generic stuff they make you do in arts and crafts at school. But I fell in love with drawing the faces of celebrities and people whose work I really enjoyed. And because I was already so familiar with these faces, it was actually a lot easier for me to find mistakes in my own work and I had the drive to learn how to fix these mistakes because again, I actually loved what I was doing and wanted to be better at it voluntarily. Now, as I've grown as an artist, my interests have changed. I now don't paint as much fan art. I don't even paint portrait studies in general anymore. However, it has taken me years to get to this stage where I'm able to paint from my imagination. And I can confidently tell you now, the only reason I've been able to stick it out this long is because I first fell in love with what I was drawing and painting. And that eventually led me to fall in love with how I was drawing and painting it. Also, side note, I really don't get why people gatekeep art. Like when people say fan art isn't real art, I'm like, um, did it exist before I made it? No, then that's art. The point is, your only job when you're learning to paint is to enjoy what you're doing because only then will you actively understand and apply the art tutorials that you watch or the books that you read. So tip number one, start by drawing and painting what you love, not what other people might tell you you should start with. No, I'm not contradicting myself here. Like I said just now, when you start by painting what you enjoy painting, you'll eventually want to get better at it and you will want to learn how to improve the quality of your work. 
And that, my friend, is when you need to start looking into the basics of good design. Because no matter how much fan art or photo studies you create, there will come a point where it feels like you've hit a wall. It will get to a point where you feel like you've reached your capacity as an artist, but then you see all these other artists doing amazing things with their work, and then it just leads to feeling inadequate. Here's a secret. That feeling is actually a good thing because it means that you're ready to level up. And the best way to do that is to equip yourself with better knowledge, especially knowledge about the fundamentals of art and design. So you want to learn values, shape language, color theory, how to render textures, composition, and so on. And I don't know about you, but this was the most enjoyable growth stage of my art journey so far. Because with every new lesson, I learned about the fundamentals of design. I could actually physically feel my art getting better. Not only was I now making way fewer mistakes in my studies, I was also able to pick way better references and apply my new knowledge to play around with the composition and create original paintings that went beyond any single photo reference. However, I want to reiterate that had I started with learning the basics, I would 100% have given up on art pretty quickly because there would be no context to what I was learning and so I really wouldn't have enjoyed the learning process. So I would definitely say that learning the basics of art is a great second step in your art career. Obviously, this is my opinion based on my experience, but let me know if this is how you learn better too. So you don't have to start with the basics, but when you feel like it's time to level up, get yourself some tutorials and a sketchbook and go ham on understanding good design. Now, this is a huge mistake that I made many years ago, and I definitely wish someone had yelled at me about it. A lot of the times we tend to pick our genre of art way too early and here is why that is a mistake. First and foremost, your genre of creation comes from your interest at the time and that is awesome. Like I said, you should absolutely create what you love to create. However, bear in mind that your interests are going to change with time. So while you may be in a 2D caricature phase right now, you might eventually get into 3D animation. And then what are you gonna do if you've boxed yourself into the first thing that caught your fancy? Secondly, your genre is often something you choose based on your skills at the time. So if you're really good at line art, you might pick more manga or comic styles of drawing. If you're great with watercolors, you might pick plein air landscapes. But like we saw earlier, there will come a point where you feel that upper limit kicking in and you're ready to level up your skills. And as you learn new things, I can guarantee that you'll find a whole new genre of art that you really enjoy creating based on your newfound skill set. But if you've already restricted your genre and built an identity around it way too soon, it's going to be way harder to break out of that mold. Why? Because we worry about what people will think or whether we're even capable of working with a new genre or if we'd lose the audience that came to us for a very specific reason. Now again, there is nuance to this. You absolutely should develop your own unique style and picking a niche is definitely really good, especially if you're trying to build a following around your art. But all I'm saying here is don't rush into that. Don't go into a creative field thinking you need to have it all figured out and set in stone from day one. Trust me, you'll end up limiting your own possibilities and that just feels awful. So allow yourself the flexibility, at least at the earlier stages of your art journey, to explore your options, try out a bunch of different styles and find your own unique artistic voice. Don't box yourself into a genre too early on because I promise it will stifle your possibilities. Okay, look, it's a little rich of me to try and tell you this because I'm so bad at it myself, but remember to take breaks. I know, I know, big yawn, but allow me to change your perspective on this, okay? A lot of the times we get so caught up in the hype of being an artist on the internet because we see all these amazing people share gorgeous work on that every single day that we force ourselves to really speed through as many paintings as possible in as little time as possible. Look, I get it, I do it all the time. But here's why this is actually really damaging to your art. First and most important of all, you're not allowing your painting to really settle into your mind. 
This might sound a little esoteric, but I found that my best work happens when I allow the painting to really ruminate around my brain for days or even weeks before I ever put down a sketch on paper. I really, really love it when the character really creates an identity of its own in my mind and eventually becomes as familiar to me as my own self. And annoying as that may be, that stuff just takes time. So if you really want to make meaningful, impactful art, you just have to give your painting the time to breathe and expand and materialize in your mind before you can even translate it onto paper or pixels. Secondly, every time you paint, you're approaching it from a different state of mind because we're human beings and we are affected by our lives and situations and when it comes to creative work, that is what we have to go off of. So with that in mind, if you were to try and complete a whole entire painting in one sitting, what you're essentially doing is gambling. If you're in a gentle, relaxed mood, your painting is going to turn out differently than it does when you're in a passionate, highly charged state of mind. But if you're trying to establish a consistent body of work, this heavy reliance on your mood each day is going to be exhausting and just very unhelpful. If you spread a painting across multiple sessions, however, you're way more likely to have a few different approaches to it and find and fix inconsistencies a lot easier. Plus, it always helps to come back to a painting with fresh eyes because then you can spot design flaws and compositional mistakes a lot quicker. So where possible, avoid trying to rush through and finish paintings in one sitting. Give it time to grow and expand and I promise you, your work will have a lot more meaning. I'm completely serious, there is absolutely a wrong way to use critique and you're probably doing it right now. It's okay, this took me a long time to understand so honestly no judgement here. Thing is, while we appreciate critique and know that it can be helpful, we're never quite taught how to actually use it. So here's two key steps to using critique the right way. Number one, choose which critique to actually use. Now, this is incredibly important and will save you so much time, effort and heartbreak. Understanding what critique to take and what to ignore is a skill and you will get better at it the more you practice it. And there are a few key things to look for when you're deciding whether a piece of critique is worth implementing in your work. First of all, can you directly translate the critique to action steps? If not, ignore it. Next, does the person leaving the critique really understand your style and the techniques that go into it? If not, ignore it. And finally, does the critique also apply to a lot of your previous work to a point where you can spot a pattern? If not, do a soft ignore in that bear it in mind for future work, but it is probably just a one-off error in this specific painting. Learning which type of critique is actually going to help you is a massive time saver and will actually help you grow a lot quicker than taking on board every single piece of criticism that you receive and trying to please every single person in your audience. And number two, and this is one that you've probably never even thought of, Learn from the critique that other people get. Bro, when I found this out, it blew my mind. All these popular artists have common sections that are flooded with compliments and critique. And you'd be surprised at how much of it can relate to your own work. And this is especially true if you follow artists that paint in a similar style and genre to you. If you look at how much critique is out there for work that is similar to yours, you'll realize just how much you've been missing out on. Trust me, hop on DeviantArt or Instagram and browse through comments. You'll learn so much more than you could from just critique on your own work. Also, speaking of critique, if you guys want to share your art, find helpful advice or just want to chat or maybe even feature in next week's video, come join the Discord server. Everyone on there is super nice and fun. I'm on there every single day and I'd love to see you there too. Link is in the video description as well as in the pinned comments. So, here is the first painting for our brand new Light Zodiac series, Aries. Aries is a cardinal fire sign that signifies the change from winter to spring. It is symbolized by the ram and its ruling planet is Mars, which is known to be the planet of war. As such, Aries can be fiery, passionate, combative and very self-driven. And here are some more lore about Aries that I couldn't really cover in the first Aries video. 
Egyptian mythology sees Ares as a representation of Amun-Ra, the chief of all Egyptian gods. The earliest civilizations worshipped them as separate gods, with Amun being the creator of the known universe and Ra being the sun god. But between the 16th and 11th century BC, they combined the two gods and worshipped them as one superior being. When Egypt went on to conquer the kingdom of Kush, the main god of the Kush people was identified as Amun and was symbolized by a deity with the head of a woolly ram. Eventually, with the conquest of Alexander the Great, these beliefs spread to ancient Greece where Amun-Ra was equivalent to Zeus Amun, which eventually turned to just Zeus, the chief of Greek gods. This is something I never even knew, and it totally blew my mind that Zeus probably comes from ancient Egypt. In Greek mythology, however, Ares is associated with the golden ram that rescued Phrixus and Helle. The story goes that Zeus took a cloud and turned it into the likeness of Hera, creating the nymph Nepheli. Nepheli eventually married the Boeotian king Athamas and had twin children, Phrixus and Helle. Athamas then went on to marry another wife, this time marrying Eno, who was incredibly devious and hatched a plan to get rid of the twins. She roasted all of the crops in the town so that the seeds would never germinate. When farmers realized that there would be no harvest that year, she bribed the messengers of the oracle, commanding them to tell the people that the only way out of this drought was to sacrifice the twins to the gods. However, Nepheli saw this from the afterlife and sent a golden ram to grab both her kids and take them to safety. Although Heli died in the escape, Phrixus survived. He eventually sacrificed the golden ram to the gods as a show of gratitude, and the remains of its golden skin were hung from a tree guarded by a dragon. So here I've shown Ares to be the masculine counterpart from the first Ares painting. He is a fiery king, all clad in gold, in the midst of battle. Most kings send their armies to war, but being ruled by the planet of war, Ares has no trouble fighting his own battles and taking aggressive, necessary action to fight for what is right and good in the world. He has built a kingdom of abundance and peace, and he will gladly slay a million foes in order to protect his creation. Here is Ares, the Trailblazer. Be honest, did you feel a little called out by this video? If you did, that's a good thing because it means that your mind is ready to level up and I hope this list has given you a starting point. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful and if you have, then let me know by giving it a big thumbs up. Comment below what you think about all of this, um, the new setup, how I sound, all of that. I could really use some helpful critiques, so let me know. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future upload on this channel. And if you wanna come say hi, come join the Discord server because I may or may not be making a video next week that is specific to the Discord server. So don't miss out, link is in the description and the pinned comment below. But with all of that said, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope it's been as much fun for you as it has for me. Check out some more videos up here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. As always, if you've enjoyed this video and found it rude, okay. <laughs>